Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to mill these big bars here. I've already done a couple of them. Um, they came out pretty nice. Been a little experimenting with a new cutter on the planer mill. So let's go over to the planer and see what we've got going on there. All right, so I got a bar sitting up here on the mill, as you can see, and underneath all of these clamps. Now these are the clamps that I made that go in the T-slot. Actually, these are the ones I made. And as you can see, they're a little bit tall for this application. So I had my young apprentice, Connor, on the bridge port for a day and had him make me up about 16 of them that are shorter. And there is a video of these in, in being made, an older video of, of these particular ones. Um, and Connor made these up and we have a full set. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to use these only and here is the cutter that I'm using. Now this is a Bridgeport 1J mill head on the planer and this is the an R8 spindle. So you've got a big adapter here down to, and this is the cutter we're using with a, uh, uses a square insert running 45 degrees. And I already milled three of these that came out really nice, but like I said, my, my clamps were just way too tall. So that's why we made these shorter ones. And uh, Connor's been very busy on the, on the machines. So let's actually go over to the Bridgeport and I'll show you what he's been doing. So as you can see, we got the head tipped back to run a, an angle. And what he's making are these little pieces. So it's got this angle milled on it. And what it is, is actually this. When it's all done, will be these things, um, just shorter. And what they are is a locking clamp that goes into a planer head ni uh, knife holder. So actually let's go over and I'll show you the head that they go in. This is a job that came in um, a couple weeks ago for a local, small local sawmill. And uh, he wanted me to shorten the heads to make them smaller. Well, here's the piece going in there. And when you tighten those set screws, it lifts up and it clamps the knife in down here. So as you can see, Connor's got some work left to do on these things that he's making, but they're coming along very nicely and I'm very happy with the work he's doing. So he's, he's learning very quickly on mill setup. He's getting really good at mill setup. So now let's head back over to the planer and you can see what's going on there. So we got all of our new clamps made up. I'm gonna go ahead and get this bar set in place. And to do that, we need to actually clamp the bar down and then we sand, pinch it in with these, our wedge clamps here. These actually bite the bar and hold it from lifting up and moving side to side. But we need to ensure that the bar is firmly seated down in. So I'm just going to go through and set all of my clamps. And if you're interested in these clamps at all, I do have an older video of when I made them. They, the, the ones I made. And uh, these have been just absolutely great on the planer here. Um, use them a lot. And I'm just kind of centering it, not going, you know, for precision here because all we're doing is facing off this surface and uh, getting it clean for uh, the next phase of this job which is a whole bunch of drilling and milling. And I'm not gonna film that because that's, quite honestly, drilling's boring. Um, that's mostly drilling and tapping. A Little bit of milling involved, but not much. So the reason I'm clamping this bar down is, to the table first is because the bar is got a little bit of warp to it. It's not absolutely perfect and doesn't sit perfect on the table. 
So I need to ensure that it's down flat before I do anything, before I do any milling, because then, then I'll have problems if I don't do this. And just tightening up that first clamp, I felt some movement. Now she feels like she's down. Sounds like it's on the table. Snug it up one last time time here just to make sure. All right. and then I just go through and finger tighten my side clamps here and then work my way back through and tighten them all up. And on the back side I just go a little bit. Feel on the torque all about the same. And because these clamps run the bolt in at an angle, it really holds the part down to the table. It bites in just a little bit, which on this job is, is absolutely fine. Um, I've done it on round shafts too, where you co you're coming in with this angle just a little bit high. And it, uh, so it pushes on the round down into the table and really works well for that. I've done some nice long keyways on solid shaft with these. Like I said, we're just snugging it up all the way around so it can't, can't lift out. And now that they're all snug, take these clamps back off. And then we'll have a free area with uh, no obstruction for milling. And I've been milling these in two passes. I've been doing a roughing pass and then a nice about a five thousandths finish pass, which has been working out really well. And as you can see, I got the digital readout there. We put that on a while back. There's a video of that as well. And we'll just run her over. Now, this machine doesn't tell me my actual feed rates. It's all by potentiometer and DC drive. So it's very um, you can't really set it, so you just run by feel. And, you know, honestly, I think running by feel makes you a better machinist than most other ways. So now I'm going to crank this up just a little bit. And we're going to bring it over and touch it off. All right, let's start it up and we'll touch it off. As you can see, it was just hitting on this side, and these bars are not square. These hot rolled bars are actually about 30 thousandths um, of not square. So we'll go ahead and uh, drop this down about, we'll take about 40 thousandths on the first pass, and then uh, we'll take about 10 for our second pass. So let's uh, start cutting.
that's cutting pretty good at that feed rate. Um, so I'm actually running 135 RPM. That's a five inch um, face mill. And actually I might speed it up just a touch more. So I can hear as I get chatter, I, I need to speed it up just a touch. But otherwise it's cutting really nicely. So it always works best with this planer mill to feed in, you know, the cut going that direction, feed the table that direction, so feeding this way, cutting. And I mean, this is my roughing pass, and that's actually really nice. I had a little chatter in the beginning because I was running a little too slow. Um, the funny thing with this thing, the faster I push it, the better it wanted to cut, so I'm very happy with that. Now we'll take another ten thousandths um, for a cleanup pass, and then uh, we should be good to go. So now I don't know if you can see this and how well this camera works. You know, I'm just learning this new DJI. Right here was my little bit of chatter, but you run your finger over it, it's, it's hardly anything. Hardly even feel it, so pretty good. I mean, it's a, actually not a bad finish for a roughing pass. So we'll go ahead and, and take another, uh, I think we'll take five thousandths and clean this up. So I don't know how well you can see that, but that's the DC drive there. And I'm running a lot slower than I was feeding before. And uh, it's cutting very nicely. And I chose to go with a 45 degree cutter instead of a 90 degree, just because of chip load with, with being a low horsepower mill, um, I figured that would make a huge difference and it definitely has helped. Uh, a lot of the stuff I run with 90 degree. So we haven't fed out enough yet to actually look at the finish out the back, but I come in here behind the cutter. That's a very smooth cut. It doesn't look it, you can kind of see some swirls, but it's actually, boy, that's, a, that's pretty smooth. We'll have to compare that to a surface roughness gauge, but uh, that's pretty smooth.
very nice. So I'll run it back and take a look at how it how it finished out. But based on what I'm seeing already, that's a nice finish. Better than actually what the print calls for. So you see we got that chatter out in the beginning there and just all along come out very smooth. Well I hope you enjoyed that. Um, about, that's about all I can show of this job because this is quite a proprietary part. Um, I've got more to do to it but I just I really can't show that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, check out the older video of making these clamps. Um, they are very handy. I use these actually, I made them so they fit in the planer and on the horizontal boring mill. They're very handy on both machines and I use them quite frequently. So a great addition to have in your shop if you want to make something like that. So check it out. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.